For 50 years, the 911 Turbo has been Porsche's middle finger to physics. Big turbos, big noise, and enough drama to make you question your life choices mid-corner. But in 2026, Porsche decided the Turbo needed batteries. Yeah, the car once nicknamed the Widowmaker now comes with a conscience. And the real question is whether Porsche has sharpened the blade or sanded it down into a safe, hybrid, friendly butter knife. Now let's start with the bit everyone really cares about, powertrain. Porsche calls it the 3.6 liter T-hybrid engine, but hybrid here doesn't mean Prius level tree hugging. No, this thing is more like if Frankenstein had a Red Bull addiction. It pairs a twin turbocharged flat six with an electric motor cleverly sandwiched into the transmission. The result, a grand total of 711 horsepower. That's 700 metric ponies, plus a few more thanks to the e-motor kicking in at just the right time. Torque? Porsche hasn't been exactly been screaming the number from the rooftops, but benchmark figures land you somewhere in the 700 pound feet ballpark, depending on how you count the electric shove. Now compare that to the outgoing 992 Turbo S, that car topped out at 640 horsepower and already felt like it had more than enough grunt to bend time itself. Porsche claims the hybrid's electric assistance makes turbo lag practically vanish. The old Turbo S was already accused of being too good with acceleration so immediate it bordered on clinical, but this new one is faster, cleaner, and sharper in response. It's Porsche telling us, yeah, we can fix the thing that wasn't broken. But here's the kicker. The hybrid system isn't just about speed. It's about rewriting the DNA of the Turbo S. You're no longer just riding a wave of boost. You're riding boost plus volts. Whether you think that's evolution or blasphemy probably depends on how many posters of the 930 Turbo you had on your wall growing up. Now here's where things get properly nerdy in the best way possible. The headline trick is this new 911 Turbo S Hybrid is what Porsche calls the Electric Turbocharger, or E-Turbo if you want to sound like you're talking about a Star Wars droid. What it actually does is pretty simple, at least in principle. Normally, turbos rely on exhaust gases to spin up and make boost, but that means you have to wait for those gases to build, which means turbo lag. The E-Turbo cheats. It uses an electric motor to spool up instantly, so by the time the exhaust gets there, it's already partying. But Porsche didn't stop at just killing lag. The E-Turbo also acts like a tiny energy recycler. It can harvest engine from the exhaust flow, feed it back into the hybrid system, and give the battery a sip of electrons every time you lift. It's the closest thing Porsche has built to perpetual motion, except it actually works and it doesn't break the law of physics. This isn't Porsche's first dance with hybrid tech either. Remember the Panamera and Cayenne e-hybrids? Well, those were the polite everyday introductions, the meet the parents hybrids if you will. The 918 Spider showed us the crazy side, the one that eats McLarens for breakfast, and even the more recent GTS models have dabbled with hybrid assist. But in the 911 Turbo S, Porsche is mixing that heritage with its turbo legacy. The same legacy that started with the infamous 930 Turbo back in the 70s. The Widowmaker with lag so bad you could order lunch before the boost hit. So you've got a 3.6 liter flat six, two turbos, an electric motor, a lithium ion battery, and all the control electronics. So how do you fit that into the back of a 911 without making it look like the car swallowed a washing machine? Well, this is where Porsche really earned its paycheck. The layout is a masterclass in German packaging. The electric turbo sits neatly in the middle of the exhaust flow. The intake and intercoolers have been reshuffled for efficiency and the power electronics are tucked away like contraband at airport security. The control units, the brains of the operation, are mounted so close to the components they manage that latency is basically non-existent. Cooling is the big headache in any hybrid performance car. More power means more heat, and if you don't manage it, things go pop. Porsche's answer? Extra radiators and smart airflow channels that snake through the car's nose and rear fenders. The trick is, they've done it without ruining the 911 silhouette. It doesn't have gaping holes everywhere like some track-only hypercar. From 10 feet away, you'd swear it's just another turbo. Only up close do you notice the subtle extra vents hiding in plain sight. Weight was another landmine. Hybrids love piling on pounds, and the last thing a 911 needs is to turn into a GTR with a dad bod. Porsche's solution was to keep the hybrid components ultra compact. The battery, for instance, is barely larger than what you'd expect in a cordless drill, tiny compared to the behemoths in something like a Taycan. 
So, while most hybrids come with the vibe of we had to make room for the battery, this Turbo S hybrid feels like Porsche built the car around it. It's compact, clever, and somehow still distinctly a 911. Now let's talk about the thing you don't see on a spec sheet. The soundtrack. Because what's a Turbo S if it doesn't make your neighbors hate you just a little? Despite the hybrid bits lurking in the back, Porsche swears the new car still sounds like a proper turbo. Fire it up and that flat six growls with that familiar mix of menace and machinery. Only now it's sharpened by the electric turbos huffing away in the background. But here's the tension. Purists are listening for ghosts. To them, electrification is a bug in the code, a corruption of the soul that made the turbo iconic. They'll argue that if electrons are helping push you down the Autobahn, it's no longer pure. And honestly, they have a point. The old 930 Turbo earned its legend with a soundtrack of whooshes, whistles, and occasionally terrifying laughs. The new car replaces unpredictability with science fiction and precision. To some ears, that means less soul and more software. Yet, when you hear it ripping to 7,000 RPM backed by a faint electric whine, it's hard not to grin. It's the sound of Porsche trying to have it both ways, modern efficiency without sacrificing the hair-raising theater. The real question is whether purists will ever accept that a hybrid can still howl. Is it evolution of the 911's music, or is it the remix that nobody asked for? Alright, now enough about packaging and philosophy, let's drop the hammer. Porsche claims the new Turbo S Hybrid hit 0 to 60 in around 2.4 to 2.5 seconds. Now that's hypercar territory. Blink and you've already broken several speed limits. But the real spicy number here is 0 to 124, or 0 to 200 kilometers per hour, in just 8.4 seconds. For context, that's quicker than most supercars even get to 100. Its top speed is a clean round 200 miles per hour because Porsche knows bragging rights need a big simple number you can throw around at dinner parties. So how does that stack up? The outgoing 992 Turbo S was already savage, 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds and 0 to 124 in about 8.9. The hybrid trims a few tenths here and there, but the real difference is how relentlessly it delivers. The electric turbos erase hesitation, so every launch feels like a punch to the lungs with no delay. Against rivals, it's even more interesting. Ferrari's SF90 Stradale with a monster 986 horsepower does 0 to 124 in about 6.7 seconds. So yes, it's quicker on paper. But the Ferrari is a three-motor plug-in spaceship with a race car diet, and it costs basically a small country. McLaren 750S? That car nails 0 to 124 in about 7.2 seconds. Lamborghini's Revoletto sits close too, with similar hybrid wizardry, but a naturally aspirated V12 screaming in your ear. So, the Porsche isn't the outright king of the hill, but here's the twist. It's a 911. It still has back seats for your emotional support groceries, everyday usability, and a reputation for not trying to kill you in the rain. Ferrari and McLaren might win the headline sprint, but only Porsche lets you do it, then pick up milk on the way home. That's the kind of performance benchmark that actually matters. So why did Porsche make the turbo go hybrid now? The answer is as much about politics as it is about performance. Global emission regulations are tightening like a vice, and even Porsche can't just keep bolting bigger turbos onto flat sixes forever. Hybridization is the get out of jail free car. It slashes emissions on paper while giving engineers an excuse to pile on even more performance. In other words, Porsche gets to tick the regulatory box and brag about faster lap times. That's a very Stuttgart kind of win-win. Zoom out with me for a second, and this T-Hybrid twin electric turbo setup feels like more than just a loophole. It's a bridge, a testbed for the tech that will trickle into whatever Porsche does next, whether that's a more radical hybrid 911 or a fully electric one. Remember, the Taycan already proved Porsche can build a fast electric sports car. This new Turbo S hybrid shows they can blend volts and boost without killing the 911's identity, at least not yet. And that brings us to the uncomfortable question. Is this the beginning of the end for the all internal combustion engine turbo? Honestly, probably yeah. The writing is on the wall. Pure combustion turbos are living on borrowed time, and this car may be remembered as the pivot point, the last generation where pistons and electrons truly shared the stage. For some, that's the evolution of a legend. For others, it's extinction disguised as progress. So there it is, the 2026 Porsche 911 Turbo S Hybrid. 
a car with 711 horsepower, a 3.6 liter flat six tied to electric turbos, and enough engineering wizardry to make other performance brands sweat. It's still brutally fast, 0 to 60 in 2.5 seconds, 200 miles per hour flat out, and Porsche insists it hasn't lost the everyday usability that makes the turbo a turbo. On paper, this thing looks like the ultimate weapon. On the road, it might be the cleanest execution of progress without compromise we've seen yet. But here's the real question, the one we'll throw back to you. Has Porsche just sharpened the edge of the turbo legend, or have they filed it down into something too safe, too clinical, too hybrid. Is this the future of performance or the slow extinction of the 911 soul?